This video will look at generating operators in symmetry and group theory for generating orbitals which represent specific irreps in a given point group. Okay, so in the previous video we were looking at the water molecule, which is in the C2V point group. There are four symmetry operations, E, C2, sigma V, and sigma V prime, where the principal C2 axis is the Z axis. Sigma V is uh, bisects the molecule in the XZ plane, and Sigma V prime is the molecular plane, the YZ plane. The valence orbitals in question are the oxygen 2S, 2PZ, 2PY, and 2PX orbitals, and the 1S orbitals of hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2. There are four irreps in the C2V point group, A1, a2, B1, and B2. The A's are symmetric with respect to C2, the B's are anti-symmetric, and the 1's are symmetric with respect to sigma V, and anti-symmetric, uh, the 2's are anti-symmetric with respect to sigma V. All right, in the previous video we discussed how to find that the reducible representation of these six orbitals was 6, 0, 2, 4 under these four symmetry operations. And then we use the reduction formula to decompose that into its irreps, which is 3A1 plus 1B1 plus 2 times B2. Now in this video, we want to go on and figure out, we know that there are 3A1 molecular orbitals, 1B1 molecular orbital, and 2B2 molecular orbitals out of the combination of these six orbitals. But what exactly are those six orbitals? So that question can be answered using what are called projection operators. So for example, if we look at um, the 2s orbital of our oxygen and we use the a1 projection operator, the result that we're going to get back is just the 2s orbital. If you look at the, uh, projection, the a2 projection operator applied to this 2s orbital, you're going to get zero. Same thing for b1 and same thing for B2. And that's because the 2s orbital of this oxygen is, an a, is A1 in character. So what is this projection operator? So to do a projection operator, we look at the given irrep of interest, so whether it's A1, A2, etc. So we look at what is the dimensionality of that irrep, which is its character under the identity. So in C2V, every irrep is one dimensional. A's and B's are one dimensional, E's are two, T's are three. So we have one up here for all of our irreps. Divided by the order of the group, that's the sum of the all the symmetry elements of the group, or the sum of the squares of the dimensionality of all the irreps. So in this case, that's one plus one plus one plus one, or four, or one squared plus one squared plus one squared plus one squared, which also equals four. So the order of C2V is four. So we're gonna have a one fourth prefix for all of these generating operators. And then we sum over all of the operators of the character of that irrep under that given operator times the operator acting on that specific orbital. So if we act under, under uh, 2S with E, we get 2S back. Uh, if we act C2, 2s stays unchanged. Sigma V, it stays unchanged. Sigma V prime, it stays unchanged. So no matter which operation we do to the 2s orbital, it stays the same. Uh, the characters for the A1 irrep under each of these operations is 1. So in this case, we'd have 1 fourth times 1 times the 2s plus 1 times the 2s plus 1 times the 2s plus 1 times the 2s. That'd give us 1 fourth times 4 times the 2s orbital, or just the 2s orbital back. So if we project the 2s orbital in A1, we get itself back. If we project it in any other irrep, we're going to get 0, because the positives and negatives are going to cancel out. So that shows us that the 2s orbital is A1 in character because it can project into the A1 irrep and none of the others. 
If we repeat this operation for 2pz, we'll get the same result. 2pz is an a1 orbital. If we do this for 2py, the one that's in the plane here, we'll find out that that is a b2 orbital, that when you do the projection operator for b2, you get, a, you get the 2py back. If you do it for the others, you get 0. For 2px, which is um, perpendicular to the molecular plane, that is a b1 operate, uh, orbital. It only shows a non-zero value under uh, the b1 projection operator. Okay, so that leaves, um, so we've accounted for one, we've accounted for two A1 orbitals out of our three. We've accounted for the B1 orbital, and we've accounted for one of the B2 orbitals. So our total set of orbitals minus the orbitals on our oxygen, we've accounted for two A1s, one B2, and one B1. That gives us two zero zero two left, or uh, which is what's equal to A1 plus B2. So in our hydrogens, we're expecting that the result of the projection operator on A1 is going to give us one orbital, and B2 is going to give us another orbital. So uh, more, more clearly uh, shown here, if I do the A1 projection operator on 1S1, well, uh, E leaves it the same. Uh, C2 switches 1 to 2, so it makes it 1s2. Sigma V leaves it, uh, sigma V is going to switch them, makes it 1s2. Sigma V prime leaves it unchanged as 1s1. The characters are all plus 1 for this A1 uh, irrep. And then we have 1 over 4 for the dimensionality divided by the order. That gives us that the A1 projection operator on our 1s1 orbital gives us 1 half 1s1 plus 1s2. So we get an equal weighted orbital, which is half 1s1 and half 1s2. And that makes sense because this is now totally symmetric with respect to any operation we give it. So it is an A1 orbital. If we do the same thing for B1 or A2, you're going to get a, a total net result of 0. But if you do it for B2, you'll get 1 times 1s1 minus 1 times 1s2, minus 1 times 1s2, plus 1 times 1s1. This is the anti-symmetric combination. It equals 1 half times 1s1 minus 1s2. So this is the anti-symmetric combinations. They're equal in magnitude. They have the same coefficient, but they have the opposite phase, the opposite sign. So now we've accounted for that's our A1 combination of the 1s orbitals, and that is our B2 combination of the 1s orbitals. So our molecular orbitals, which obey the irreps of the, of the molecule, are our four valence orbitals from the oxygen. And this uh, symmetric linear combination of our, of our 1s orbitals from the hydrogens and the same anti-symmetric combination of those orbitals. So that's how we use the generating operators to get an orbital which respects one of these irreps within our given point group, which makes it suitable to be a molecular orbital uh, for the resulting molecule.